Spatter and Spritz Part 2. It's a messy business, but somebody's got to do it. Welcome back to the Mind Watercolor, everybody. You know, Reese talked me into the fact that we didn't quite cover enough with the spritzing and spattering. But a couple more things I want to show you. Mainly, I want to show you what you can do with it. And in order to do that, we're going to do a spontaneous painting. But this time, we're going to base the spontaneous painting heavily around spatter. And I'm going to show you just a couple other things you can do. You don't necessarily just have to splash the paint down and then that's it. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you right at the beginning is masking fluid. I had a viewer on Facebook ask me, can you not spritz and spatter down masking fluid? And then when you paint over that, then lift it back up and you have white splatter. What a great comment. And absolutely yes. And I was remiss in not mentioning that technique. Uh, another commenter uh, mentions spritzing and spattering down white gouache. Great technique. Looks like snow or over a dark sky looks like stars. I won't be showing that, but I will be showing the spattering of masking fluid. We're going to see how this works. I have no idea what I'm going to paint, but I'm going to start out by spattering down masking fluid. And I'm going to do some clear water spatter. And then I'm just going to start moving the paint around and see what happens. Be fun. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do that involves spatter is take this old fan brush. This was once used as an old uh, oil painting fan brush. Just a bristle brush. But since I've started using it to spatter masking fluid, so basically I just get some on there like that. And I want a little more. I want some big drops. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Spread out some of the good thing to experiment with before you do anything in earnest. You want to make sure you use an old brush like this because, uh, and not one that you paint with. Even if you soap it, you're going to get bits of dried masking fluid in there. So, all right, I'm probably overdoing that a little bit, but. I'm just going to touch some of these and make them run together. That'll produce some nice kind of white speckly texture. Now when you wash this out, make sure you wash it out in a container that is not your paint water. With all the spatter, you can, can manipulate it a little bit. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to pull out some into some lines. This will be maybe some little highlighted branches. Just using a bamboo stick here. If you're a beginner and you're not real familiar with masking fluid, it's just a way to protect the white of the paper so that you can paint darker colors through it and then come back when you remove this and paint highlights. Really a pretty cool way to use spatter in addition to paint. All right, so we're going to let that dry and then come back and start our washes. All right, so the masking fluid is dry and we're ready to start with some washes. But first, I'm going to spritz clear water. If you saw my last video on spritzing and spattering, you saw this technique. I'm going to do this first and then you'll see what happens. Um, it'll, it'll create neat little wet pockets. So when I start laying in washes, they'll, they'll creep out into that and It'll start painting foliage all by itself. It's just one of the coolest techniques ever. I blotted my brush. I'm just picking up some of this excess moisture. Just a little bit too much water. And this is classic Mind of Watercolor, folks. This is why I named the channel what I did. The whole philosophy being that if 
if you do certain techniques right um, it's in certain ways sometimes you can get watercolor to engage and paint for you and that's what's happening here I'm going to get some red iron oxide and come up here with a contrasting color still got lots of neat little droplets so clear water that can take and move that paint I love doing these spontaneous paintings with limited palettes. And I think I mentioned that in the sponta last spontaneous painting video I did. It's just, I don't know what it is about it. I try to pick some harmonious colors, but it just makes for an interesting color mix. And just, I'm not sure why I like it, I just do. It's almost hard to stop myself. It's just fun to see what happens when you tap in that paint and those little water droplets just take it out there and and do some of the coolest things with it. I'm just going to come in with a dry brush and lift in some places. I'm going to lift out or some places that are already lighter. And I'll just... Give me some nice variation in tone. We'll bring some foliage forward and then I can add darks and push other back. A lot of these end up coming out as tree clumps. So I kind of expected that, I guess. And I think the value of these spontaneous exercises is, is just to practice these techniques. You can start using them in paintings where you've planned a little bit more. You've actually done some composition and you've decided, you know, you're going to have a grouping of trees here, a grouping of trees there. So this is mainly just to practice techniques. All right, so I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back to that. All right, so the paint's dry. We're, it's time to see what we got here. So just using a rubber cement pickup. That works best, I think, on masking fluid. And when you have spatter, you can feel it. it. There are so many tiny little dots of it that you won't be able to see it all, especially with the paint down there, but you, you can feel it. There'll be a little kind of a raised bump. So you just run your finger over it, and when you've got them all, you won't feel anything but dry paper. Well, that's going to make for an interesting final approach. And I think I overdid the masking fluid a little bit. I shouldn't have put quite so much down. Um, but I can still, I can go into these white areas and do some nice detailing. And I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll probably speed it up from here. And I'll show you what I'm going to do.
Well, there you have it, guys. And as usual, that was a blast. Spontaneous painting just couldn't be any more fun. I hope you'll give these little spatters with the masking fluid a try. That just makes some nice little white contrast areas that you can paint into. And also, let me tell you, that clear water spatter for the background, painting into that clear water spatter, just makes some magical things happen. So also give that a try. I think you're going to love that. Thanks, everyone. I'm so glad you could watch. This was a help to you. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. And we'll see you next time.